All right, everybody. Good morning. Working on a 1997 Dodge Ram B2500 with a 5.2 liter. Customer recently installed a starter because of a no crank, no start condition. Unfortunately, it still has an intermittent no crank, no start problem. Check engine light is all we, is also on. And we're going to be testing and checking things out with the C Reader 123X. So let's power this bad boy on and check it out. That's kind of cool. It's like uh, going to Vegas and trying to play the slots. It's looking for the VIN right now. That's freaking awesome. All right, so not a big deal, but it was unable to determine the VIN number, so we're going to put it in manually. And this is a really cool feature that I'm already loving about it is that it's entirely touchscreen. You can also use the analog controls over here, uh, but you can input the entire VIN through touchscreen. Freaking awesome feature to have. Sorry, everybody, I must have bumped the button. Uh, anyways, we're in the PCM. Look at this, it's pretty cool. It's actually charging the scan tool as we speak. And if I disconnect this from the vehicle, I can still operate this scan tool. Even though it's not wirelessly operating, I can still go into save data, carry it around, and it maintains power. All right, uh, let's go into read the fault code and see what we got. So these are the codes that we have so far. Misfire, cylinder number seven, six, uh, I got a P0300, and engine coolant temperature remains below operating temperature. So let's go ahead and we'll check the, oh, can we save this data? Let's uh, do report. So this is the information it's gonna give us here. And it'll show us all the different four codes here. And if we want to share it, which I have to connect to the internet, uh, we can share it via email, which is also a cool option. So currently network not available, so I'll have to connect to the network. Okay, so just to show you guys, if you need to take the uh, codes to your boss to show them what you found, uh, you can go into data. You can go into the diagnostic reports, which we created. You'll see that we uh, did one here for the demo just to check it out earlier and then here's our dodge so if we go into dodge we can actually see all the different codes that it had and that's what actually automatically saves it so that's a pretty cool feature to have uh, one more thing is that because they had replaced their starter and we don't know why let's do this battery voltage thing and see where we're at all right so right now we're maintaining 12 volts uh, it doesn't appear to have any current battery issues as far as like our initial voltage let's crank it and then we'll see what it drops to and then we'll see what it's charging at okay so that's a pretty big drop actually it dropped down to uh eight volts or just below eight volts but right now we are charging above 14 volts so that's kind of good information to know so we do have a drop so now we'll have to go in and do a voltage drop test to see where the drop is coming from. Uh, but it's actually a really nice feature to have to check your starting and charging system and how much uh, battery voltage is currently available. So two thumbs up to, to the launch for sure. All right, so now we're just gonna actually test the uh, cold cranking amps of the battery or the overall health of the battery using this really fancy tester from Mac Tools. And we're at 575 cold cranking amps. Now let's just see. So right there, there's probably one of our hugest problems is that we don't have enough cold cranking amps for this vehicle uh, to support the, the full starting and charging system. So even though we've got 12 volts, we've got 268 cold cranking amps out of a 575 rated battery. So we could check our voltage drop still from one end to the other and that might be a test that I'll probably end up doing I'm not gonna bore you guys with that today uh, but overall my my thoughts are that this thing needs a battery so that might be one of their biggest problems why why they changed the starter before they did the battery I don't know what took out what first who knows alrighty 
So in order to determine the misfire, I have to remove the housing. Look at this disgusting stuff, dude. There is just, look at this watch. There's just fucking bugs all over the goddamn place in here. It's disgusting, man. Boom, boom. I don't even know what the hell these things are. Look at this. And I gotta dig all this trash out of the way to get the doghouse off. All right, customer approved battery and further diagnosis of the check engine light I'm in progress of. So, two, four, six, eight. Eight is our problem. We're checking out the cap, which actually looks pretty new, like it was replaced. The wires don't look too bad. Let's just take a look at the injector real quick. That doesn't look too bad. Look at the harness, see if it's chewed. Follow it up. Mm. Everything seems pretty good there. And I think the next thing to do is to pull the plug. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's use these fancy Matco boot pliers. Just twist it first and give it a little pull. All right, let's get that out of the way. Let's get our ratchet down in there. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm. At least I'm able to do it one handed. Love this ratchet. Speed ratchet. Actually, doesn't look too, too bad. Suppose I could do a cylinder contribution test if the scan tool will let me do that. I don't know. I could also do a compression test. There. Do our tester out. This and this. Let's see here. Let me get this compression tester down in here. Oh yeah, it's gonna be easier with this thing disconnected. I don't know why I thought I could do that. Let's just screw it on in. Like so. Perfect. And then got the distributor disconnected so that we don't have to worry about running fuel or ignition so that, that'll help got compression so that's not the issue well, I suppose it would have helped if I would have looked at the goddamn codes first all right it was uh, 306 was what I was after not 308 and 307 retest all right so it was actually 306 and 307 so not eight I made a mistake I got ahead of myself anywho we're on 306 now I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys up condition of the plug Still looks pretty good if you ask me. All right, let's see what we got. Well, it's definitely lower and then the one behind it, we're at about 110 instead of 150. Let's check number seven. All right, so here's the plug for cylinder number seven. Again, doesn't really look too, too bad. A little oil fouled, not real bad though. I'm gonna hook the compression test gauge up, but something else that we wanna make a note of is that somebody's actually done some cylinder head work here not too long ago. You see the fresh exhaust manifold gasket, the old exhaust manifold. And then if you look back here, look how clean that freeze plug is. So I'm sure at one point they had something going on with this where they had to do the cylinder heads. And so doing a compression test when you see something like this isn't a bad place to start. So 
We're gonna check some other stuff out, but let's get our compression for cylinder number seven, and then we'll get it for five two, since we already did eight and six. All right, so you guys watch. This is for cylinder number seven. All right, so we got it pretty good. Jump up here. It's about at about a hundred and. 20, about 130 I'm looking at the gauge right which isn't too too bad I know the battery's still almost dead we're gonna replace that here momentarily but let me go ahead and jump to number five before we went out of juice five. let's see about the same about 125 maybe. All right, so from here, I'll probably jump over and do a cylinder leak down test of cylinder number six. But, you know, just on the offset chance, I didn't crank it long enough. I got the compression gauge hooked up one more time. I just want to make sure that, that, that what I'm looking at is what I'm looking at. It never hurts to measure something twice, I'll tell you that. So let me set you guys back up here. That needle definitely stopped rotating. Let's see where we're at. I didn't really get much more out of it. So I, I cranked it and cranked it until that needle was pegged and we were pegged at about 120, which is still 30 PSI difference. So, all right, here we go. So we're at top dead center. Pull this out. Let's get some air going. Okay. I can even hear it already. I got my stethoscope on just in case. Oh yeah. You guys hear that? Let me get my screwdriver. That's the intake. In intake valve dropped. I've got uh, about 65-70% loss on the intake side. Alright, so diagnosis complete. I don't think it's worth putting the battery in at this point, but you can see what we got going on here. There's our uh, results. And uh, using this thing was pretty cool to uh, try to figure out some of the issues that it had. All right, so I'm just curious what the C reader has for data on this because I was watching Keith DeFazio earlier and he talked about how certain tools do certain things and certain tools do different things or don't do certain things. So I'm curious, this has to have some kind of misfire monitor somewhere, some way of being able to see which cylinder is misfiring. I mean, I would think data stream. Okay, this has 18 PIDs. The other one had 19 PIDs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back. Alright guys, so you guys got a chance to walk through some diagnostic troubleshooting with me. Look, uh, we could have gone numerous directions. The scan tool that I'm currently using did not have a cylinder contribution test. I could not verify the misfire counts through misfire monitors on this specific scan tool. 
I don't think it's the scan tool though because I actually did utilize another scan tool that does have the capability of doing that, which is the C-Reader 319, and I didn't get any data. So I'm thinking it's because it was an older vehicle and it just didn't have that kind of capability. Now, I didn't have the Solus Edge with hand, on hand. I didn't use the Varus, I didn't use the Altel, I just used the C-Reader 123X and the Pocket Reader, uh, and to which, which I found was that if you go onto the manufacturer specific content for PIDs and everything else with the C-Reader 123X, you were given about 53 to 54 PIDs for this vehicle. If you drop down to the global OBD2 factor, you were given about 19. If you went into a pocket style reader, you were given about 18, so you were short one PID. Which one in particular? I don't know, I didn't pay that much attention to it, but I can tell you this much. Each scan tool does something different, so I'm not the be all end all. I don't pretend like I know everything. I did watch Keith DeFazio's video recently today and on New Level Auto, and I'll put his link down in the description. But look, man, that guy's got like a bunch of fucking scan tools, and he says, don't buy one, buy them all. I don't know that I would buy them all per se, but I gotta tell you, he's absolutely right. You get different information depending on what information is allowed with the scan tool. So that was kind of interesting to see. Uh, we went after it though. You know, we did the cylinder leak down test. We saw that we had 65% loss. It was a pretty moderate loss, okay? It's not to the extreme, but it's not the minimal. It's a pretty moderate loss. So that means he's got something going on in the valve seats, which, by the way, is actually. Kind of sad because he looks like he just had the heads done not too long ago. If it's even his own vehicle or if he just bought it, I don't know. But it looks like somebody did some work not too long ago and pff, fucking cylinder leak down right right through the intake. So I don't believe it's a uh, overall compression issue. Yes, we did lose compression, which you would lose compression during a cylinder leak down uh, test. If you had a loss, you would have less compression. That makes sense. However, I don't believe it's in the rings or anything like that because that would be a completely different test. We could have done a wet compression test. I don't think that would have told us too much more than what a cylinder leak down test did from the compression test. So just to verify that I didn't mistakenly not run the vehicle long enough or crank it long enough, I went ahead and did the test one more time and what happened, uh, we barely got an increase and so Whammo, bammo, we figured out the problem. All I can tell you is that from me, from a mechanic standpoint, if I got a misfire, I'm going after a couple things. One, I'm checking scan data to see what I got. Two, if I'm able to do a cylinder contribution test, great. If I can verify the monitors and see which cylinder is misfiring, cool. That gives me a better understanding. If I can't and I don't have anything lost in fuel pressure or anything like that, I'm jumping right to a compression test. From the compression test, I'm jumping right to a cylinder leak down test. Boom, boom, boom. I'm fucking mechanically diagnosing it and I'm done. That's it. I'm not saying you couldn't figure the problem out electronically or do some kind of fancy way of measuring it. I think the way that they do that is fucking awesome. There's no way that I have that kind of skill set, but I have a different set of skills. Me, when I see a misfire, I suspect a couple of things. One, visually, rodents chewed the wires. Two, I've got lack of fuel pressure. Three, I've got lack of compression. Four, I've got cylinder loss somewhere. And that's what I jumped to. And nine times out of 10, it points me in the right direction. I'm not saying it's the only way to do your diagnostic troubleshooting when it comes to misfires, but it's pretty goddamn good. All right, that's all I got for this video. Thanks as always for watching, I appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I have to tell you. Share if you wanna share. We'll see you guys next time. Doses. And cheers!